Hi, my name is Vance Mellon. I made these sculptures for Lion, Witch, and the Wardrobe, a little play we put on in Mundelein, Illinois. The Kirk Players put it on. I've shown you how I made these trees in a past video. They're made out of paper. Just put your paper wrinkled up a lot and then wrapped around concrete forms and two by fours and then painted with highlights on the higher spots and shadows down in the deeper spots. These trees turned out pretty well. I glued all the paper together with spray foam. In order to make my life-size foam sculptures, I started out with this base that we made. It's just made out of two by fours. You could kind of see how it's put together together with screws. It was very solid. We painted it black so you couldn't see it up on the stage very well. This is some two inch foam I bought that was pretty cheap. I cut it up into human sized chunks. Okay, so we got feet, we got, what do you call them? Calves, thighs, torso, arms, forearms, and we got some big cupped hands because he has a cupped hand shape. So we are now going to try to assemble this using our glue gun here, right? Yep hot melt glue gun, and we're just gonna tape it together using a uh, good old simple masking tape. And after we do that, we're gonna put it on this, this big pole here, uh, kind of tighten him up a little bit, and then we're gonna have the actor do the same pose when he gets frozen by the witch in Lion Witch in the Wardrobe. I carved him using this fish fillet knife, and I used this knife sharpener from Ikea that I bought pretty cheap, because you have to have your knife pretty sharp. A little later I realized that it'd be better to use a serrated blade, not with big old jagged serrations, but more like finely serrated blades seem to work the best. And so I cut these pieces out. I'd recommend using some kind of metal gloves or something that won't get cut, because it's pretty easy to slip and chop your hand off with this stuff. Make sure you have an adult help you if you're a kid, right? And here is the key to everything, spray foam. Lots of spray foam. That's what holds paper together well. It almost acts like a super glue that puffs up and fills in spaces and holds everything together. Okay, I've carved out all these little pieces of foam and made sort of a 3D structure. I just used really cheap masking tape because this tape is just gonna be inundated with foam anyway. I'm going to spray it in all the cracks here. You know, every little hole is going to have foam. I'm going to build up kind of some depth and have several layers here. Have a, like some chest, some pec muscles. to do an abdomen too, which I'll probably still do. And so this is basically all foam cut with this knife, glued with the glue gun, which didn't work very well. So I ended up wrap, wrap, wrapping it with cheap tape and we're ready to foam it up. I also recommend using some rubber gloves because this foam stuff just does not come off. I mean, this is like two days ago. You could kind of see how it's sort of a mess. Make sure you use these rubber gloves. And I shook up the spray foam can a lot. It's best to really shake it up so it comes out nice and puffy. I hold it upside down. There's kind of a little seal. You have to push it just hard enough to kind of break a little seal that's inside of there. Some of them have these little yellow nozzles on the tip that you have to open up in order for the spray to come out. So here I am. I sort of have learned over time that you don't need to push down really hard. It's better to press down pretty light on the dispenser so it comes out in sort of thin sort of like a small spray instead of a big chunky spray. It's gonna expand anyway, even the smallest amount expands. So I'm sort of working the foam into various cracks and crevices. It's only held together by tape, it's so light, but once I get this foam all over it, it's gonna be super strong and it's not gonna break unless you really jump on it. Here I am building up the face. I made the nose a little thicker and kept the eyes recessed a little bit. It's sort of like drawing. You're just sort of building it out. It's called additive sculpture because you're adding material onto it to build it up. Here I am to can number two. Once again, I have to kind of open the nozzle and it's, well, it squirts all over the place if you don't have that nozzle open. So now I kind of start to build up the shape a little bit more. And a lot of times little chunks will fall off. You can see as I'm working, sometimes I'll actually peel those chunks when they're dry off of the tarp underneath. And then I'll stick those back on with a little bit more foam because the foam is really just like a super glue. It's really strong and really uh, nice and crispy when it dries. Also, don't forget to put that tarp 
tarp underneath or some sort of paper or newspaper or something because it's really going to drip a lot. Now it's just a matter of patiently building it up and see it dripping off once in a while. So get everything positioned where you want it and then just get your foam all over it and let it dry and then come back and do another pass at it. Three cans. Shake, shake, shake. Shake your booty. Little plumber's crack there. Build up the face again. Build up the stomach. I actually kind of streaked it downward almost as if the stone was dripping a little bit. So it could be helpful to trace someone's body, maybe one of the actors that you're trying to represent with this sculpture. I think it's the Fawn character in Lion, Witch, and the Wardrobe. And maybe you look at a few reference photos front and side on your actor to kind of see how thick certain portions are, like their stomach, to make sure that the anatomy is somewhat correct. It doesn't need to be perfect, right? So here it is drying. You can see how it starts kind of small and then puffs up after it dries. Smaller, puffed up, not expanded, expanded. I come back in, check it. It's real nice and crispy. And there's some really good chunks on the bottom that I can peel off of the tarp and glue back on and wherever I want. Looking good. Okay, here's what I ended up with. I like it. So what I did was I built up about five cans of spray foam to make this life-sized figure. The spray foam costs about maybe $4 a bottle uh, at Home Depot. It's, you know, it's just the basic great stuff stuff that I like. Um, so then, after building it up, I then used this uh, kind of meat carving knife to saw off a lot of parts of it, added more foam, sawed off more parts. The head's a little big, I'd probably change that. Now I'm going to paint it black so that all the black goes into the cracks, crevices, and holes. And then I'm going to paint white over the top of that so that it kind of sticks out. You could also carve it off like this and have it more planar if you would like it to look like that. So all told, I've got a sculpture that probably cost me about 50 bucks to make. I'm gonna paint this base black. I used my reciprocal saw here to carve off this uh, board back here, which I will now break off. And it should be pretty well done. So I'm gonna do that in a second when I have the camera off. That's how it works. Back isn't as good as the front because it only needs to be seen by the audience in the theater. So that's how I made my foam man sculpture for Lion, Witch, and the Wardrobe. Here he is in my car, wondering what my neighbors are thinking. So here it is on the stage. We're getting ready to install it and set it up. The key to painting this thing is to get the dark, dark paint down inside the crevices and then use a little bit of a drier paint and slap that all over the outward tops of all these bumps. And so you have all these nice, deep, shadowy crevices with highlights. And you can even highlight tops of the shoulders and the tops of the forehead, tops of the knees, things like that, where the light would shoot downward. You have to think about where a sun might be coming from when it's on the stage so you can enhance the shadows and also the lighting on the stage will help a lot too right so you can see the highlights that I put onto the brow and the top of the nose this guy actually put a little color in that's representative of the actual guy that he's supposed to be this is the fawn character a little red in his shirt a little orange down on his legs could see I stuck the horns on his head which are just little chunks of spray foam that were hanging off here and there. Anyway I think he turned out really cool looking, very dramatic looking when you see him up on stage. I stuck a sword made out of tin foil in one of the guy's hands, painted the 2x4s black. It'd probably been easier just to hide the 2x4 behind the one guy's leg rather than having it stick right up his butt like that but uh, no one ever really noticed it once it was lit up right. Anyway I think it turned out great. Here it is with a little bit of lighting and the, the lamppost 
post nearby. So one last thing I wanted to show you here were these stumps that I made, these tree stumps. Basically the way I did that was to take that paper, the brown butcher paper, wrinkle it all up, and then I adhered it to the sides of the blocks with twine that I just wrapped around it, tied on the top, less tight on the bottom so it looked like roots that I turned and twisted. And then once I added the spray foam in and painted it, they looked like pretty cool little stumps that we can then carry around. The technique of the paper worked so well, we wrinkled it up a little less and made rocks out of it that we stuck around the front of the stage for a very low budget. So there you have it. Sculptures, stumps, trees, every cool thing you need made out of butcher paper and spray foam. To me, spray foam is the wonderful, magical thing that can be turned into almost anything. I hope this helps you in the designing of your Lion Witch wardrobe set or any other play that could use these cool, inexpensive techniques for jazzing up your set.